in the US and we learned that Michael Jackson was wrong. It does matter if you're black or white. A prominent US civil rights campaigner is being investigated now after it was claimed she falsely portrayed herself as black for almost a decade. This is, this is like <laughs> appropriation to a pathological level. What's so disturbing is she could have done all this good work as a white woman. Rachel DeLiesel has been slammed for pretending to be African American and has now spoken out for the first time. Yes, overnight all eyes were on Rachel DeLiesel's interview with the NBC Today show because she has had trouble answering questions before now. Are you African American? I don't I don't understand the question. <laughs> uh, okay, well let me rephrase it for you. Uh, could you appear on Hey Hey It's Saturday without offending Harry Connick Jr? Because <laughs> she answered that question head on. I also don't, as as some of the critics have said, put on blackface as a performance. Mm. Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Dolezal's case raised some interesting questions about race and identity. I do know that the subject of race is very difficult to quantify. How black is black enough? Uh, I, I would have guessed uh, any actual blackness would actually be a pretty good start. <laughs> but what would I know? I'm an elderly Chinese woman. <laughs> Thankfully, her interview cleared everything up. And finally, your two sons, Isaiah and Franklin, are here in the studio. They are. Um, if I were to ask them if you're a black woman or a Caucasian woman, how do you think they'd answer? Ultimately, we have each other's back. We're the three musketeers. Oh, so now she's a 17th century Frenchman. <laughs> has, she learned, has she learned nothing from this experience? And just a quick note to the Australian Today Show, be careful with your segues. All of this is causing some to question her motivation. If she needs to see a professional, she should. Returning home now, and chocolate lovers can celebrate this morning. <laughs> Closer to home, the housing affordability debate rages on this week. Along with wondering why we don't all have higher paying jobs, Joe Hockey delivered this truth bomb. If housing were unaffordable in Sydney, no one would be buying it. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I'm not sure that really helps Joe's case. I mean, think about it. A lot of people watch the Big Bang Theory, but that doesn't explain why. <laughs> we get it, you nerds. Crack on. It's a complicated situation. Not even Ross Greenwood can stop hard-working Australians like Carl Stefanovic from giving up. Annual so the repayments. annual repayments yep. we move to on what is a $550,000 mortgage or so, about $36,000 mm. a year. So you've got to earn seventy two dollars to, to pay the thirty six. dollars You're right, you've got to pay tax. And that's not living off anything. $90,000, you're not living off anything. Yeah. You haven't paid the rates. Mm. And so this is the dilemma that many people have got mm. in Australia right now. Just don't buy. What do you do then? Just don't buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up with today at my parents' place. <laughs> So let me explain housing affordability the simplest way I can, using the footy show. Because as I've always said, the footy show is a metaphor for life. <laughs> so as an example, let's imagine this arm wrestling match is an auction being held in Sydney. OK, now Wendell Saylor is a property investor looking to buy. Ben Ross is a first home buyer. Wendell Saylor's arm is a property portfolio backed by foreign investment. Ben Ross's arm is a below average income. <laughs> Bo Ryan is the auctioneer. And Fatty Fortin is just the neighbourhood idiot who turns up for a sticky bird. <laughs> Let the auction begin. OK, 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 OK. We, we, we can't show you how the auction ended because it is horrifying. <laughs> but Ben Ross did end up in surgery afterwards. So here is the actual X-ray from his Instagram account, which represents the broken dreams of first home buyers. <laughs> now, they would be forced to sleep in their cars, but, as Joe Hockey has previously pointed out, poor people can't even get into the first car buyer's market. <laughs>